Changing batteries one-handed, can we do it? For the most part. Like NASCAR. Let's go! You messed up, and you know you messed up, and you're here because you messed up. Hi, my name's Grant, and even though this isn't my mess up, I have done this before. You have stripped a nozzle inside of a heat block, and you need to get it out. And it's not coming out by traditional means, so uh, we've got some less traditional means. Let's get into this. Before we get too far, the first thing we have to go over is you might not succeed. The fact that you're here tells me that you might have a busted nozzle stuck inside of your heat block. Now, this heat sink and heat brake I literally put on for the thumbnail photos, so ignore them. This heat block comes courtesy of a good friend of mine, Scott. Scott got a little too rowdy when trying to remove the nozzle on his heat block. And uh, this heat block has seen some stuff. There's lots of schmoo all over it. We're going to talk about that as well as to why the schmoo is on here and uh, what it came from. But the goal of today's video is to extract the nozzle with whatever means are necessary. On the table in front of me, I have implements ranging from a hammer and crowbar, a drill, a blowtorch, some other miscellaneous hand tools, and I've probably forgotten quite a few things. I don't know if we're gonna have success on this. This is a hardened steel nozzle. It's really the only reason I'm going through with this. If it was a brass nozzle, throw this stuff out. It's so much cheaper, or put it aside so you can do it in a batch like I am. But I need to get something from my lovely assistant right over here. Safety glasses, because you gotta protect your delicate eyeballs. And when we start using any cutting implements, we're gonna go ahead and grab the face shield so the audio might suck there. Sorry, have the lapel mics, maybe that'll help. But yeah, we're gonna start by trying to see if we can get this out by traditional means. Now, if you don't have a bench vise, this might be a little bit harder. Having a bench vise is going to help you out a lot. Now, this is a bench vise, but it is not attached to my bench. This is a bench vise that I just screwed into a couple of blocks of wood so it doesn't fall over literally for the purposes of this video, because my bench vise is on a bench that is not this bench. So, first thing, we have a 930 seconds, that's normally the right size for an E3D style nozzle, and I already know this isn't going to work, but you can try to unscrew it. I know this one is completely stripped. And here's why I know this. One, it came to me like this, so I knew that to start with, but it is hardened steel, and hardened steel is way stronger than aluminum, which is what this block is made out of, or aluminium for all of you that are from across the pond or prefer to use the actual pronunciation. It's a lovely material to work with aluminium. If you disagree with me, let me know in those comments below. I'd love to have a civilized discussion. But yeah, this is a, this is a tough break. Um, thankfully, we stock lots of nozzles and lots of heat breaks at all times. So he was able to call me up and say, hey, I done screwed up can you save a brother? And I'm like, yeah, I, I totally can. Come on over, grab the parts, and uh, leave me your old one, because I'll make a video out of it eventually. He actually got this thing really chewed up, and we'll see if we can get the top-down camera to focus in on it. But you can see it is really chewed up with pliers and other implements that you probably shouldn't have used. And unfortunately, it's also covered in plastic. Now, we covered this in one of our fails in the previous fail video. I will card to it right above so you guys can go take a look at it, where we looked at your fails from the internet. So if you want to be in the next Print Fail Friday, make sure that you tweet at us, tag us on Instagram, email us, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, get us the photos, make sure that you use the hashtag print fail. That way, well, we can find it as well because we want to show off your failures, talk about why they occurred, and maybe help you from causing them again. We're gonna go over that in the future videos. Make sure you guys get subscribed to learn all about that one. But yeah, that's your first problem, that the, that the nozzle to the heat break was not there. So he's got lots of excess plastic schmoo. We can look at getting that off. The first thing I do wanna do is look at getting this thing a little bit toasty. 
burning off all that excess plastic so that we can have a reasonably clean block to work with. Now, this is a big block of steel. This is aluminum. So chances are it's going to sink the heat away relatively fast. So having a propane torch, preferably map gas. I just, I have propane hanging around. Uh, butane is great too. Those little butane micro torches. We'll link to a couple of those down in the description for you guys. But these are great because they produce lots of heat very effectively. Is it going to be enough? Let's find out after a word from our sponsor. That's right. Again, this video is not sponsored by anybody except us, 3D Musketeers. If you want to make awesome stuff, if you want to support us and do what we do, go over to patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers. We have tiers as low as $1. Come on, it's a dollar. And it helps us make cool videos like this and pay to get my lab coat embroidered. Actually, I already paid for that, but that's going to be coming soon. If you guys want to see a video about how embroidery machines work, let me know. I got the, the person that's going to be doing it is going to let me film it. And either I'm going to film it just for myself and our patrons, or we're going to turn it into a real channel video. But we can also help you with 3D printing. So if you have problems like this, where your nozzles are stuck in your blocks, maybe, just maybe, let one of the pros over at 3D Musketeers take over that 3D printing for you. Yes, it's going to cost you more than if you did it yourself, but are these headaches really what you want to be going through? I didn't think so. So if you want to get those ideas out of your head and into your hands with full arch part rapid prototyping and product development, hit us up, 3dmusketeers.com. Links are in the description down below. Fire. Yes, fire. If you are not an adult, have an adult present. If you are an adult, but maybe you're a, you know, adult with adult money, but a kid's sense of humor, have an adult around, right? Just because you're over the age of 18 does not mean you're an adult. Can I get a like for all those that think that they're still kids and like playing with fire? Come on. Now, as I'm hitting this, you can see some of the red coming off. That is from other chemicals that are on the block. If there was nothing else on there, it would look like that. There'd be nothing else coming off of it. We are exciting something as it's coming off. So we just want to get this thing nice and toasty. And I shouldn't have to say this, don't freaking touch it. It's now very hot. Ooh, it smells good too. It does not smell good. Don't touch it. Don't be stupid, okay? Don't do that. Just heat it up. You're gonna need it. Now, the reason that we're doing this is looking to free anything that might be stuck and causing us problems. All right, I got a little bit of heat in it. It is smoking. Smoking. Now we're gonna see if we can just kind of pry this out. Now it is loose. Ooh, we gotta put a little more crank down on you. You can see that it is loose. It is actually wiggling, but it does not wanna come free. So can we, I'm trying to see if I can get it to grab it. There's likely a bit of a thread still in there that it can grab. And if we can get it, oh say, it's now starting to cool down. So it's getting to a point where I don't think it's going to come anymore. With traditional tools, so we're going to grab a ratchet. See if we can ratchet this thing out. Ooh, that is starting to get nice and tight. Oh, no kidding. Look at that. It's going to come out that easy. Wow. All right. Hey, I didn't think this was going to work. This is going to be a really simple video. You might get lucky. You might not. I got incredibly lucky. I did not pre-plan for this, but I got incredibly lucky. We still had a thread or two still in this thing, and we were able to pull it out. Now, I'm going to set this down on that piece of wood. I'm gonna grab my secondary camera and I'm gonna show you guys some of the damage here. Now, in the event that this thing was completely stripped and that's what I was actually banking on, the fact that it was gonna be totally stripped, you can flip it over, you can grab a soft piece of metal. Grab a metal wedge, preferably like a, a nail set that is not hardened. If you're using a hardened steel nozzle, okay, and you use a nail set that is also hardened, you're going to damage it. You need to use something that is softer. This is pretty easy to figure out. You can use files, you can use, there are tools. And if you don't know, just go for it. It's trash to you anyways, right? There's really no pain in doing this. But also recognize I put a lot of heat onto this hardened nozzle. I have likely annealed it quite a bit. So this hardened nozzle, I would not trust it anymore as a hardened nozzle. As a regular nozzle, assuming the threads are okay, which we're gonna take a look at in just a minute, should be okay, but I don't think I would run any more carbon fiber, anything like that through it. Now I am a little bummed because I did bring out other power tools and I was really excited to get to use my, my, my portable angle grinder. Maybe we'll cut this thing open so we can take a look at the threads just for, you know, 
kicks. But yeah, you want to do what you can to get this nozzle out. When these strips generally happen, is this thing cold enough to touch yet? Okay, it is. When these generally happen, it's because you've tightened it too much and you've rounded out some, some, not all of the threads. Let's take a look at that. As we can see, we've got some little pieces of metal and I'll kind of point to them right, right there. Some little pieces of metal and these are the actual threads to this heater block. Now we can see some threads still in it. However, they're really not all that great. What occurred here is this nozzle ended up spinning some of the threads inside of there, causing them to, well, not work. When we applied an upward force as we were turning it out, we got it stuck in a way that it was able to grab some threads and work its way out. This nozzle might be salvageable. This heat block, absolutely not. It needs to go in the garbage. But as you guys can see, we can get all the way straight through. Are you going to be able to see? Yeah, you can see my finger underneath it. And that is what we were going for, okay? We wanted to get this nozzle out. Now, it might, again, not always be this easy for you. I got a little bit lucky. And especially if you're running like a Creality style hot end, like this one is, you might have more problems because this is an all metal hot end. This is not. So you got to deal with getting that PTFE liner out. Now that process is relatively similar. You just have to pull the PTFE liner out and then get this thing into your bench vise to go ahead and get everything apart. Just want to show you some of the damage. We've got absolutely some threads pulled out of here and you can see it's all just really, really fine shavings of metal that if you don't pick up from your floor will end up somewhere embedded into your foot late at night like stepping on a Lego. Be safe about that. Let's take a look at the heat block itself. Now that it has cooled down, we can kind of see some of the actual damage here. And we've got some, some actual pieces of metal that are no, they're not where they belong. And we can see it actually looks like, oh, you know what? It's not stripped, it's cross-threaded. And we know this because for that thumbnail, I had a heat break and a heat sink screwed into it. And we can see the heat break screws in just fine. Will a heat break screw in just fine to the other side? They're all threaded the exact same. Yep, it goes in perfectly fine. So what likely happened was when it was being screwed in, it hit something and uh, the gentleman went to torque it down and instead of it going through whatever clog or garbage was in the way, it decided to spin the threads. Um, now, as we talked about, this nozzle may not be hardened anymore. There's no way to test this without like proper testing tools. So that's not what we're here to do. I don't need another hardened nozzle. I've got plenty in stock. And I know some of you might say, well, that's a first world problem, Grant. No, it's a business problem. When we have printers that clog up, I just literally replace the entire hot end. And then eh, once a quarter or so, I'll sit down for a couple of hours and unclog all the nozzles. So if you guys want to see how we do that, let me know and I can do that. But we're going to look at get, taking off some of the gunk from here. And to do that, we've got to use the fire again. Now you see how from the top down camera, there is no real other color on this. It's pretty clean in terms of the flame. That's how we know that it's relatively okay. Now, what I can say is I see a lot of aluminum on here. This is hardened steel. It should be black, not the white and silvery that it is. And that is from the aluminum shavings. You can actually see part of the thread on this nozzle. Take a look. It is right there, a little silver chunk of aluminum. Ooh, that's still kind of warm. Be careful about that. This heat block, total trash. This nozzle, if you have spares, use it. If not, you know, keep it as like a last ditch need spare. But this heat block is absolute crap. Let's take a look to see what heat blocks look like on the inside, shall we? I figured this video was going to require more effort than it did. That's why I got all these power tools. And I don't know about you, but it sounds like a shame to waste that. If you want to see the full extended cut of me cutting through this heat block with a angle grinder, you have to subscribe to our Patreon. That will be for patrons only because it's going to make this video way too long for YouTube. So there you have it. We were able to extract what effectively was trash and $30 worth of it from this heat block. And well, we didn't have to use power tools. We did that just because we wanted to. The damage is pretty clear. This nozzle stripped out the threads and that was actually found once we cut open the heat block. 
that's a little bit crazy that we were able to find those threads. This happens to all of us. The first time that you end up accidentally over tightening a nozzle, even worse, breaking off your nozzle inside of your heat block, you're gonna learn a valuable lesson. And that lesson is have spare parts because spare parts are cheap. You don't need to use official parts. You should, but you don't have to. I know that this is a nozzle X from E3D and I know that I've just ruined its warranty. I don't really care. I was able to extract it and utilize it. This is a real E3D or was a real E3D V6 heat block. Uh, unfortunately, the heat break and heat sink are not real, but it's what I had available at the time. With that being said, this is a great way for you to learn from your mistakes, right? Similarly, do not try to remove a nozzle when it is cold. This thing did not budge at all when it was cold. We could not pull it up like that. It required it to be hot. Do not install nozzles when they're cold because you will not get that tension up against the heat break that you need. If you would like, leave us a comment and we could do a video all about assembling a hot end so that you guys can see how to do it correctly so you don't end up, well, like this. This was a lot easier than I expected, but that's okay. Sometimes these challenges are a little bit easier than you expect. I brought a crowbar, a hammer, a drill, a driver, drill bits, an angle grinder, which we ended up using, but was not immediately necessary, a nut driver spare Creality hot end, not that we needed that where we were going. And yes, you can do this with way less tools, but understand that these parts are really cheap and your time is valuable. So make sure you understand that. Coming soon, we've got a wonderful series all about printer maintenance and what you should do in the event that, well, your stuff isn't really 100% great. We're gonna talk to you about making sure that everything is lubricated, your belts are tight, and even looking for broken parts in your printers because yeah, a lot of printers, including this reasonably expensive, but still incredibly affordable Prusa Mini has lots of printed parts. All the orange parts you see are 3D printed and they can break over time. They tend to. We're going to show you guys how to find those parts and then somehow hopefully fix them so that you can have your printer print its own replacement parts. You might have other 3D printers, but it's way more fun to have the printer that's broken fix itself. It's just like part of the deal. Am I right? And come on, can I get a like for the lab coat? You don't want to know how hot it is right now for me, but I thought it was worth it because this is a science video. We're doing science. Ish. But hey, it was fun nonetheless. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember, nozzles are replaceable. Your fingers, not so easily. So always, always, always wear protection, safety glasses, and a face shield. Anyways, guys, remember, this is is not typical. You should not run into these problems if you follow directions. And if you want to see a written way of how to take apart and install a hot end, E3D has a beautiful one. We will put it down in the description so you can see it. But if you have a failure like this, let us know and we can help walk you through the ways to solve it. Every single one of these problems is going to be relatively unique, but hopefully the solutions to them are not as drastic as cutting the heat block in half. Although, it was a fair bit of fun. And if you want to see the whole thing of me using an angle grinder, holding a camera, and quick changing a battery in the middle of the cut, make sure you get subscribed to our Patreon because that is where that extended cut will be. Hope you guys enjoyed this video though. Remember, failure is always an option as long as you have a learning experience from it. Because you either fail and you learn, or it succeeds and you learn. But let's be real, a lot of us learn more from our failures than we do our successes. Don't get disheartened. 3D printing is not click and go. I mean, unless you got a well-tuned Prusa, but that takes a long time to get there, okay? I have a Creality hot end on there, that's just like sacrilege. Don't be afraid to run into failures. I've broken off nozzles inside of heat blocks before. I have quite a few that I've broken off inside of heat blocks. But for the cost of a heat block and a nozzle, it is not worth trying to save the heat block. And I promise you, in just your time alone, none of this is worthwhile. But if you are on a budget and you do want to learn, and you happen to have some of the fun tools that we do, give it a shot. What do you have to lose? My name's Grant. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, Keep making awesome. We've got 
Yow! Oh, that's still really hot. Oh, there's your outtake. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this one, right below me is gonna be our fail series where every week we go through your print failures and talk about why they happened or at least why we think they happened and, you know, kind of get a little mad at people that give you the wrong answers in those comments. Next to is gonna be a perfectly hand-picked video made especially for you. And oh yeah, don't forget, next to me are our wonderful patrons. Thank you all so much for your support. And if you want your name in our videos, you can support us directly at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers. I'll see you guys down in those comments. Take care.